Hello everyone, Top Hat Waffle here once again to continue working on our Counter-Strike Global Offensive competitive level. Today we'll be adding ambient and triggered sounds into our level. To start off, we'll load CSGO SDK and then hammer World Editor from there. While triggered sounds in your level don't exactly serve a competitive purpose in most instances, they do help give your level a little bit extra oomph to make it really shine and stand out. Plus you can do little fun things like have a bell ring on a service counter. That's what we'll do here. If we start by placing the prop static, and then just do a search for bell, we see that there is a bell model from Italy. It's actually a doorbell, but if we just rotate it 90 degrees, we can slap it on this counter and no one will probably know the difference. To make this play a sound when we shoot it or press E on it, we need to put a volume around it to act as a detector. This is essentially just going to be a button. If we do a search for invis, we can use the invisible texture, Select that and create a brush around the button. It doesn't need to be perfect, I'll just leave it as a square. Then if we press Ctrl T and turn it into a funk button, let's head over to the flags tab and check don't move. We don't want the button to move around after we press it, so that's why we enable this flag. I'll also set the delay before reset to 0.05 so we're able to spam the button like an impatient customer. If we head over to the flags tab one more time, we can check damage activates. This will make it so if we shoot the button, it will also activate along with E for activate. Now we need to place the entity that actually plays the sound file. If we drop a new entity and we change this class to ambient generic, this is the generic sound entity that Source Engine uses to emit sound on triggers. Let's just name this bell. Under sound name, click browse. This opens the sound browser. One thing that you want to take note of is the sound type that you're looking for. We have game sounds, raw, and scenes. Scenes will turn up nothing since this isn't used in Counter-Strike Go. If we select raw, this will give us paths to all raw files, such as MP3 and Waves that the Source Engine supports. If we have autoplay on, we can click on a sound and it will play it. What we usually want to keep this on is game sounds. We lose the file extension, but we're left with the sounds that are listed in sound scripts. These sounds have additional parameters on them, such as pitch randomization and also arrays of sounds. So if you were to use one of these that was, say, a footstep, every footstep does not sound the same. That sound script could call an array that has multiple sound files listed underneath it and randomize it. This makes it so players don't go, that foot makes the same sound every time I step. Let's do a search for bell. If we use bell impact, that's a pretty good sound that we'll use. Let's click OK and then apply. We have max audible distance, which defaults to 1250. If we zoom out and we have 2D helpers on, we see that we have this sphere. It's also present in our 3D view. This determines the sound radius for this sound. I'll set that to not be super massive and then click apply. We're also able to choose the volume. I'll set it to nine. That's all we really need to set for the class info options on an ambient generic for it to function. If we go over to the flags tab, there's three available flags. Play everywhere will make the sound play everywhere in your level. This can be useful if you're doing a song file that's playing throughout the entire map, though that's not really used in competitive. Start silent is usually always checked. This just makes the sound not play as soon as the level opens. Is not looped means that the sound file will not be looped. If you uncheck this, that does not mean that the sound file will automatically loop itself. It means that it will then use the loop cues that are embedded into a WAV file to loop itself. Not all sounds support looping. Let's click apply and go over to our funk button that we created. We need to add an output that when this button is activated, the sound plays. Let's click add, unpressed, and use the eyedropper tool to select our bell ambient generic. We then want to via this input of play sound. Let's click apply and that's all we gotta do. Let's run the map and see how it looks. Here we are inside of game. If we walk up to our bell and press E on it, it plays our bell sound. We can spam it since we set the delay on the button and we can also shoot it to get the same effect. We're able to see what sounds are being played where in our world. We can use the SND underscore show one command. Up in the top right hand corner of our game, we now have total channel zero. This is displayed when no sounds are currently being played in the world. If I start to swing my knife, we'll see that the weapon slash sound is being played. 
If I start to walk, there's footstep sounds along with the sound of the material underneath myself. If I come up to the bell, we can see that the bell impact is being played right there. One other command that we can use to check positional sounds is SND, visualize one. This will show us in our world where the sound is being played from. Now when I press E, we see that the wave sound is being played from right above the bell. If I start taking steps backwards, we can see that a line appears above where my feet hit. This is the sound for the footstep being played in the world. Ambient generics are great if you're only looking to trigger sounds. Ambient sounds require that we use a completely different entity called an Envy Soundscape. Envy Soundscapes are predefined lists of sounds that will play at random intervals or at positions. There's already a large array of these available for us to use, and we can preview them in-game to better understand what they sound like before we start putting them in our level. Of course, we are also able to create our own Envy Soundscapes, but that's way beyond the scope of this video, and you can learn about that pretty easily on your own after you understand how Envy Soundscapes work. We can begin by getting the list of existing soundscapes from our game. If we open up CSGO, and we have to do this from the main menu, if we run this command while in-game, it crashes the CSGO client. The command we want to run is CL soundscape print debug info. I'm going to run the clear command to make sure my console output is empty, and then I'll run the CL soundscape print debug info. This will return a list of every soundscape that it's able to find inside of the game. If we select everything here, and then copy it. I want to save this into a text document so I can refer to it when I'm placing soundscapes in my level. You'll notice that the default soundscapes are very well organized, typically in the map.location format. The soundscape that I'd like to preview is the Assault Outside soundscape. Now if we load up our map with that list saved in the text editor, we can preview some of those soundscapes. I'll start by selecting Assault Outside and just copy it. In my game console, I want to type play soundscape with the name. After I hit submit, the sounds will begin to play all around me. If I type SND show one, I can see that there's a large amount of sounds being played and they're all looped. We can see that they start and stop seemingly at random. If I turn SND visualize one on, we can see that they're all coming from the world origin. This is because these are ambient sounds. If I want to preview a different soundscape, all I have to do is select the name of it and then do play soundscape with the new name. The soundscapes will then transition between the two in a fade. Now, how do we go about placing soundscapes in our level? We can do this with a few different entities, but the main one of these is going to be Envy Soundscape. If we place a new entity and change its class to Envy Soundscape, we'll want to first set the soundscape from nothing to the soundscape we want to be played. I'll choose this to be Assault Inside, and I'll copy that. I'll paste that in here, and we also have the radius. Soundscapes work by a player walking into the radius of a soundscape and being able to see it at the same time. This means that when a player walks inside this 128 radius around the Envy Soundscape entity and is able to see it, the soundscape will begin playing. The player does not have to remain inside this radius for the soundscape to continue playing. Let's give this soundscape a name so we can reference it later using a proxy. I'll name this Soundscape Inside. I now want to position this soundscape to be in front of this door, so when the player walks inside through this doorway, they're forced to enter the radius of the Envy Soundscape entity, triggering the sound. I have three other entrances to this inside area. I need to handle these by using a proxy. If I place a new entity and change it, to a soundscape proxy. I then want to set soundscape entity to be the regular Envy soundscape we just created. This will reference this Envy soundscape. Doing the same thing with the Envy soundscape proxy that I did with the regular soundscape. I need to position it in a way that the player will enter its radius as they walk through a transition. So now the player has to enter this radius when they walk through the door. I also want to do the same thing with my doorway to be. With the inside soundscape now handled, I need to create the outside soundscape. I'll do this by just creating a shift drag copy of this soundscape, and I'll change its name from soundscape inside to soundscape outside. I need to choose the new soundscape that I want to use. 
and set that in the soundscape field. I can now use another soundscape proxy to handle the transition from inside to outside into B. All I have to do is update the soundscape entity here to use the soundscape outside. What about over where I have this AC unit sitting on the wall on my terrace main path to B site? The AC unit should make sound since that's what AC units do. Soundscapes can handle this for us by using a positional sound. To find out what positional sounds are available, we have to dig through the sound script folders. If we open up where the game directory is and then go to the scripts folder, when we scroll down, we'll see soundscapes and then all of the soundscape files that exist. Since I'm using the soundscapes from Assault, we can double click to open it. Most of these are commented out pretty well of what they do, and you'll learn how they work just by spending a little time looking at this script. The soundscape that I am interested in is assault.roof. This soundscape references another soundscape of Assault Outside, and it has at position zero an AC unit. This is the position that I'll use for my AC unit on my wall. There's a few other positions such as another large AC unit and then this soundscape next to the vents. I'm only interested in using one position, so I'll use position zero. We first need to set this up by creating another NV soundscape. We can do this by just creating a new entity and I'll name this one soundscape roof. In the soundscape name to be played, I'll choose assault roof. Here we have sound position 0 through 7. These positions are referenced in that text document. Position 0 and 1 are AC units, and this is the position next to the vent. So if I want this positional sound to play of the Assault AC unit, I need to use sound position 0. To specify where the sounds are coming from, we use an entity called an info target. Info target just has a name and a position and it's used for things like soundscapes, beams, and all sorts of other entities that just need a position reference in the world. I'll name this soundscape roof AC POS zero. This is just so I know what it's for and I'm using it for position zero. I'll position it in front of my AC unit and then on my MV soundscape, I need to specify it under sound position zero. When I click apply, a line will be drawn from my soundscape to the info target representing its position. For this soundscape to make sense, we also need it to start when we go through this alleyway here. We can use a soundscape triggerable to do this as well. A soundscape triggerable will allow us to use a volume entity, like a trigger soundscape, to play the sound. This is a much easier way of handling soundscapes in larger paths instead of shift dragging and creating multiple copies of Envy soundscapes that would look something like this, which is sort of unmanageable in your level. To create these, let's head over to our texture selection and do a search for trigger. I can then create a volume where I need the transition to happen, and I'll also extend it all the way over here. I'll press Ctrl T and I'll change it to a trigger soundscape. For a trigger soundscape to work, it references another NV soundscape in our level. Unfortunately, it cannot use the regular NV soundscape, it has to use NV soundscape triggerable. Since we already have this NV soundscape set up, and this is the soundscape that I want it to use, I can just change this to an MV soundscape triggerable and hit apply. When I change it to an MV soundscape triggerable, the line between my soundscape and the info target disappears, but the connection will still work. I now want to select the trigger soundscape and under soundscape, specify soundscape roof, which is the MV soundscape triggerable. Let's have one more soundscape transition. I can shift drag this to create a copy of this soundscape triggerable. I'll shift drag this NV soundscape triggerable and just place it inside. This NV soundscape triggerable will just trigger the assault outside soundscape. I'll want to clear out soundscape position zero since that no longer exists. And I'll change this soundscape to soundscape outside trigger since I already have a regular NV soundscape. For the radius, I want to set this to zero since I don't want this entity's radius to affect anything. I'm having the trigger volume determine when this soundscape should start. If I set this to negative one, the soundscape will trigger whenever we can see it, which is not what we want. I'll now update the soundscape on my trigger soundscape to be the outside trigger. I'll click apply and that should be it. Let's compile it and check it out in game. Now that we're in game, a helpful console command that we can use to troubleshoot soundscapes is soundscape debug one. This will draw lines in the world to the soundscape that we're currently using. 
if I walk up, the soundscape for Assault Outside is right here. Now that I'm closer to it, a red line is drawn to me. It knows that I'm close to it, but I'm not within its radius yet. As I walk closer, the line turns green, which means I'm now connected to this soundscape. The sounds will begin playing, as we can see with SND Show 1 up in the top right corner. As I walk away from this soundscape, we can see that a yellow line is tethered from me to the soundscape, meaning that this is the current active soundscape. As I walk inside, the soundscape changes to the inside soundscape. I can walk over by where I have two NV soundscape proxies, and I'm now tethered to this one instead. If I transition over to this one, I'm now using the outside soundscape. Over by my door, this is an NV soundscape proxy. This is an NV soundscape triggerable. When I open the door, the triggerable soundscape becomes active, and a blue line is drawn to the positional sound that I've told to play by using the position zero, which was found through that soundscape. Right here is approximately where my trigger soundscape is. I can visualize this by turning on show trigger toggle. When I enter this volume, I'm still in this soundscape, and the tethered line is being drawn from my player to that soundscape. When I walk over into this volume, I switch into this soundscape here. Well, notice that the blue line connected to the AC unit has disappeared. That's because that positional sound is no longer being called in the soundscape that I'm in. When I walk back, we can see that that blue line and the ambient sound for the air conditioner is being played. I hope you enjoyed your time seeing how sounds, triggerable, and ambient are added into our level with ambient generics and MV soundscapes. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to join us again tomorrow for the next one, and happy mapping.